Okay, let's talk about the Praxis exam and specifically the Elementary Education Multiple Subject ex Exam. And the test code on there is 5001, and the math subset uh, to that is 5003. And that is a mouthful. <laughs> so if you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you're going to be taking this exam. Um, so a little bit about myself, I'm a math teacher, middle school, high school, to college, and many years ago I took the Praxis exam as well, and they're challenging exams, as they should be, because math, uh, not just a, being a math teacher, any teacher is a profession. And I think, unfortunately, uh, just a little side commentary that a lot of people, um, you know, they we just don't get the respect <laughs> that, not, not, not from everybody, a lot of people uh, respect teachers but then a lot of people think that oh it's easy to teach and yada yada you know that type of thing but as you and I both know or you'll find out when you become an actual classroom teacher it takes a lot of commitment a lot of work you know just to get your certification and skill and years of experience to to uh, to develop your craft okay and I will say that it's definitely worth it um, you know, it's challenging, but there's a lot of rewards to teaching for sure. So with that being said, we're going to go over this practice problem um, just to kind of give you a little indication of where you think you might be in terms of math. Now, if you happen to get this particular um, problem correct, I would not just be, you know, totally complacent about this elementary education multiple subjects exam. As you probably already know, whether you're teaching elementary school or middle school, these days, the Praxis, states that use the Praxis exam and uh, no, other states that don't, the trend is they, you know, they want you to be well-rounded uh, in core uh, subjects, reading, writing, mathematics, etc. And um, so this is a basic level kind of algebra problem. You definitely should be able to solve something like this. If you can't solve it or if you struggle with it, don't freak out. If you happen to like my teaching style, I actually have a full uh, prep course for this exam. I'll leave the link in the description of uh, this video. I do a lot of um, different courses, prep courses and whatnot. Been very, very successful at it for uh, many years, but believe me, my courses are extremely comprehensive and um, I think you'll really find them uh, valuable. But with that being said, let's get into this problem. So if you think you can solve this problem, you should go ahead and pause the video and do it. If you're not quite sure, let's get into it now and we'll uh, solve it together. So this is just a basic equation, basic algebraic equation. Technically, the word here would be a basic linear equation. So I'm going to get into this. I'm going to solve this one here in just a, a second, but I want to do an easier version of this problem. So let's scoot this over. And I was nice enough um, to put fractions in this problem for you. So I know that you um, will enjoy that, as your students will <laughs> teaching at the elementary level. Yes, in all seriousness, nobody likes fractions, including myself, but they are numbers and we got to treat them with respect as well. But let's let's do a simpler version of this problem, the steps that we have to take, and then we'll come back to this. So let's let's do this. Let's say two times five X minus one equals uh, one. Okay, so let's say this was the equation we had to solve. Well, anytime you see parentheses grouping a sum or a difference, or there's an X involved, something like this, and there's a number hanging outside of this parentheses, this is an indication that you have to do the distributive property. It's almost always the first thing you do when solving equations if this uh, is there. Not in the distributive property scenario is not always um, you don't you know you won't always run across it, but if it, it's there, you have to simplify. So it's going to be two times five x, which would be ten x, and then two times this negative one that would be minus two equals one. And then just to solve this here. We're going to go ahead and add 2 to both sides of the equation. So we get 10x is equal to 3. Then last but not least, we're going to divide both sides of the equation by 10. So we get x is equal to 3 over 10. So this would be our solution. So the steps here that I, that I took is going to be the same steps here. The only difference is that we're going to be working with fractions. Okay. So if you want to go ahead and give this a try, just follow these same steps. If you 
you know, weren't quite sure and see if we can get this uh, answer. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it now. All right, so I'm going to take two thirds. I'm going to multiply it by one fifth x, and this two thirds, I'm going to multiply it by one. So, how do you multiply fractions, right? So, we've got to multiply the numerators and the denominators. So, this is going to be 2 over 15x minus 2 thirds equals 1. All right, so if you got this far, then that's excellent. So, let's go ahead now to do what? We're going to add 2 thirds to both sides of the equation. Now, why are we doing that? Well, a quick review. In algebra, when we're solving equations, you want to get the variable terms on the left-hand side of the equation. It doesn't have to be the left, but typically it's always the left-hand side and the numbers on the right. And we want to simplify down to one variable term over here and one number term over here. In order to do that, we may have to move numbers and variables to the left-hand right, uh, the left or right-hand side of the equation. This is all part of solving equations, the steps you may have to take. Okay, just keep this in mind when you're talking about solving equations. Whatever you do to one side of an equation, okay, like here, I added two thirds on to, to the left side, you have to do to the other side. So when solving equations, it's very much like a teeter totter. So if I'm going to add two thirds over here to keep it, keep the equation in balance because these are equal, think of just like equal weight to keep it in balance. I also got to add two thirds on the right hand side. So that's the general um, principle when we're dealing with equations, whatever we're doing, manipulating them is whatever you do to one side, you got to do to, uh, to the other. Okay, so let's continue forward. So now what you want to do is you want to add down in a column manner. So you can see that this negative two thirds plus a positive two thirds is going to go away. So this is, that's exactly what we want. We're, 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 we're removing it from the left hand side of the equation. So it's going to leave me with 2 over 15x is equal to 1 plus 2 thirds or 1 and 2 thirds. But let's write that as, uh, this is a mixed number, let's write it as an improper fraction. So that's going to be 3 times 1 is 3 plus 2 is 5 thirds, right? So five, 1 and 2 thirds is 5 thirds. Now you could have said, okay, uh, 1 plus 2 thirds, that's 3 thirds plus 2 thirds, and that's perfectly fine. Okay, but you, but we're at 5 thirds. Now the reason why you, <coughs> excuse me, the reason why you want to have your answers as an improper fraction, it's just going to make it easier to solve this. So yes, I want to divide both sides of the equation by 2 fifteenths, just like I did over here by, we're at this step here. We're going to divide by both sides, whatever's in front of that x, but that's not the best way to do it, okay? Uh, the best way to handle this is multiply by 15 over 2. Now when I do this, you can see that I'm just going to get a 1x or just x. But uh, multiplying by the reciprocal, so whatever this fraction is, I flip it upside down, okay? And the whole idea of doing that is I know I'm going to get a 1 or 1x. This is equivalent of dividing by both sides of the equation by 15 halves. Okay, so if you divide by the both sides of the equation by 15 halves, it's you're doing this operation. Okay, so don't be like, oh, you know, I don't like that. No, it's just easier to work in this manner. But again, remember, whatever I do to one side of the equation, I got to do to the other. So I got to multiply by 15 halves over here. Okay. And so we'll end up getting 5 times 15 over uh, 5 times 15 over 3 times 2. So let's go ahead and just make sure we got the math right. So that would be what? 75 over 6. Okay, so x is equal to 75 over 6. And let me see here if this can be reduced. I don't think so. But let's just check anyways. Here, I got my little trusty calculator. Uh, yes, it actually can. Okay, so tw uh, 3 goes into this, 25. And 3 goes into this, 2. I probably would have seen that if I kind of stood back and took a pause here for a second. So this would be our final answer. Let me give you a hint. Now, when you're taking this exam, you have to, you know, obviously have your answer in a particular form. Um, 
you know that you need it to be in but never take a, a fraction that's an, an improper fraction and turn this into a mixed number in other words don't go oh I got to divide 25 by 2 and then get you know get turn this into a mixed number that's bad okay don't do that because you're gonna end up making mistakes just so, but you do need to reduce your answers another thing is do not convert these fractions into decimals so if you have your calculator and you convert these into decimals, students love to do that. That causes all kinds of problems. Just embrace the fractions. Embrace mathematics. <laughs> you know, really, uh, and that's what you have to do. Um, too many people fail these exams on the math portion of it because they're taking shortcuts. They're looking for, they go online, they're looking for quick, fast, you know, hey, you know, uh, review real quick that's typically not going to be enough even if you're you're strong at math you need to go back and review and put the time in because the worst thing is you don't want to go sit for the practice exam this particular exam and fail by one point two points you know something like that you really need to um, you know commit totally to upping your math skills so you can walk in, in and uh, confidently take this exam it's just gonna make you a better teacher overall so uh, let's go and wrap up this video if you like my teaching style, I literally have hundreds and hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel, so hopefully you'll subscribe. Again, I'm going to leave a link um, in the description of this video to my uh, Praxis Math Prep course. Extremely comprehensive. I do way more than I do on YouTube. S solve like hundreds and literally probably even thousands of problems. It's very comprehensive. Um, will more than suffice uh, in terms of your you're uh, getting you ready for your practice exam. If you enjoyed this video, I definitely appreciate a thumbs up, and leave me some feedback. Let me know what uh, you know how the practice has been going for you. Maybe you've you know, struggled uh, with it before. Um, a lot of people have, and it's not just those states that are using the practice exam. This is just teacher certifications in general across the United States. So if you're in California, for example, you'll be taking the CBEST or CSET. Um, other states, there's other type of exams, but many states use the Praxis exam, and I can tell you firsthand, firsthand they're challenging. Okay, um, so, anyways, get ready for it, pass it, have a great teaching career. Thank you for your time, and um, with that being said, have a great day.